Hey y'all, what's good, what's poppin'? So for today's video, I'm gonna change it up a little bit and I'm gonna do another skincare related video. Today specifically, I wanna talk about lip care. So we're gonna be talking about all things lips, things like how to prevent chapped lips, how to exfoliate the lips, how to moisturize the lips. And of course, at the end, I'll go ahead and talk about some of my personal favorite products and some recommendations I have to help with some of those issues. So about a week ago from when I'm filming this, James Welsh here on YouTube uploaded a video of his lip care routine. So I was inspired to kind of make my own and talk about products specifically that I like and what I find works for me and in addition it's starting to get to the cold part of winter and we're in prime chap lip season so I figured what better time to make a video on a topic like this than now so if you're someone that struggles with chronically chapped and dry lips and you struggle to find products or if you're just interested to learn more about how to take care of your lips and my personal product recommendations for lip care products be sure to stick around till the end of the video we'll go over all of that but before we get into it I just want to say thank you to all my new and returning subscribers out there thank you all for subscribing to the channel and helping me to grow my channel if you are new here and you haven't already just be sure to go ahead and click that subscribe button and as well click the bell button and turn on notifications so that you can be notified every time I upload a new video and with that being said let's get into it so I've made a bunch of videos on skincare in the past and I feel like in every video I've like briefly touched on a lip product that I'm using that I'm loving but lip care is actually really important and the skin on your lips is very different from the skin on the rest of the face so it's important that when it comes to lip care you have a routine specifically tailored to your face and then one specifically tailored to your lips because they're gonna have two different needs even though they both are our skin on the face. So a few of the things that set the skin on the lips apart from the skin on the rest of the face. For one, the skin on the lips lacks oil glands. So essentially what this means is it doesn't have its own means to moisturize itself through sebum like the rest of your skin. So in a way this is slightly positive because your lips cannot experience breakouts the same way that the rest of your face can because there's no potential for clogged pores. But this does have of course the much bigger drawback in my opinion of your lips not having a natural source of moisture on their own. And in addition, the skin on your lips is thinner than the skin on the rest of your face. In general, the skin on your lips is also less pigmented than the rest of your face. It lacks that natural melanin that the rest of your skin has. That helps to give your skin a little bit of natural protection against UV rays. Now, of course, the melanin content of your skin is not enough to completely protect you. You still want to be using a daily sunscreen. But with the lips, especially because they lack melanin compared to the rest of the face, they lack that natural protection that the rest of your face has. And so it's even more essential that you're protecting your lips from environmental stressors, particularly UV damage. Your lips also face certain things that the rest of the skin on your face won't necessarily be dealing with that can compromise their moisture level and their health. So things such as salty foods, toothpastes, and even licking the lips, getting saliva on the lips, these are all things that can dry them out and cause them to flake and chat. So because of these differences between the skin on your lips and the skin on the rest of your face, it is important that you are using different products for the lips than you are for the face because they're going to have two completely different skin concerns. Now there are certain things that are formulated for the face that it's okay to go ahead and apply to the lips. So in general, it's okay to apply hydrating products that don't contain active ingredients, things like hydrating toners, essences, moisturizers. So these things help to impart moisture to the skin. And as long as they don't contain any active ingredients that are meant to address other concerns, it's generally okay to apply these on the lips as well. And that can help with improving the moisture content of the lips. Now where you do want to use some caution when it comes to applying products meant for the face on the lips is when it comes to products with active ingredients. Products that contain things like retinols or exfoliating acids like alpha hydrate hydroxy acids or beta hydroxy acids. You generally want to avoid putting products like these directly on the lips unless they are formulated in a product that is specifically meant to be applied to the lips. So when you're reading the ingredients lists on lip balms, lip masks, other lip products, some ingredients that you want to look out for that help with moisturizing the lips include things like castor oil, hemp seed oil, shea butter, cocoa butter, honey, lanolin, vitamin E. These all have a nourishing and moisturizing effect on the lip. Another great ingredient that seems to be controversial for some reason is petrolatum or petroleum jelly. The thing with petroleum jelly is it's not necessarily going to impart moisture into the lips. What it does is it creates an occlusive barrier over the lips to help seal the moisture in. So if you see this ingredient in a lip product, you don't necessarily want to avoid it. But what you do want to make sure is that the ingredients list includes other moisturizing ingredients in there that are going to help impart moisture into the lips because the petroleum jelly is really just going to help to seal it in. It doesn't really help to add moisture to the lips itself. If you are someone that tends to wear makeup on the lips, especially matte lipsticks and long wearing lip tints, things like that, it's really important that at the end of the day, when you are washing off the rest of your face, that you also take the time to make sure that you properly cleanse your lips and wash all the product off. That just ensures that these products can't continue to mattify and dry out your lips. And in addition, making sure that your lips are product free helps to ensure that anything you apply on top is absorbing properly so that you get the maximum efficacy out of your products. So I want to briefly talk about exfoliation for the lips. Now the lips, like the rest of the face, can from time to time use a little bit of help with the natural skin cell turnover process and helping to remove the excess dead cells just to keep that process going and to keep everything 
everything looking smooth and healthy. There are a lot of different products, DIY methods, and things like that out there that do help with exfoliating the lips, but there are a few tried and true ways that I personally think work best. Now, like I said earlier, the skin on the lips is thinner and more delicate than the skin on the rest of the face, so it's really important with exfoliating the lips that you are being as gentle as possible because the skin here is even more prone to over exfoliation, especially if you are fighting lips that are already chapped. Over exfoliating the lips really just exacerbates that issue and creates more water loss. So personally, in my experience, I would recommend staying away from things like lip scrubs, using a wet towel to wipe the lips, things like this that are abrasive and harsh on the lips, especially with lip scrubs. I just feel like there's a really high potential for micro tears and other damage. And in addition, it's really easy to just get a little bit too over enthusiastic and over exfoliate the lips. What I would recommend for someone that prefers more of a mechanical exfoliation, you know, someone that wants to use something physical against the lips to actually buff off the dead skin cells. What I find is really effective, but has a much lower risk of over exfoliation is one of these silicone lip scrubber tools. You can buy these on eBay, Amazon. I'm sure you can get them at like Ulta, Target, Walmart, anywhere where you can find cosmetic products. Because it is silicone, it's a lot gentler on the lips than some of these granulated lip scrubs can be. And as well, it's a one-time investment. If you take care of it, it'll last you indefinitely. If you are someone that prefers to physically exfoliate your lips, I would definitely recommend using one of these. And I find that after I do a gentle exfoliating treatment with the lip scrubber, any lip products that I apply on top just absorb in much better and hydrate the lips much more effectively than if I didn't exfoliate my lips. Now, as far as chemical exfoliants, I don't recommend using something like an acid peel or an exfoliating acid toner that is formulated for the face on the lips. However, if there are some products formulated for the lips that do contain small amounts of things like alpha hydroxy acids and fruit enzymes that help to give a gentle chemical exfoliation to slough off the dead skin cells and give your lips a much smoother and plumper appearance. And I do have a product in my recommendations that has some of those in the ingredients list and I'll touch on that in a minute. So that's the basics on lip care. So now I wanna go ahead and just get into some product recommendations and some things that I find that really work to help moisturize the lips. So the first product I wanna talk about, and this is my all time favorite lip mask that I've tried is this Primera Clean Berry Lip Mask. So like I said, this is my favorite lip mask that I've ever tried. It intensely moisturizes the lips and it also stays on the lips throughout the night, but it's not sticky, which is really important because I find that a lot of lip masks, either they're really sticky or they tend to slide off throughout the night. And this doesn't have that nasty sticky feeling and it's still on my lips in the morning, which is really good. There's a lot of good moisturizing ingredients in here like shea butter, moor moor butter, sea berry, rice bran wax, and glycerin. And these all help to infuse the lips with moisture and provide a protective barrier over top the lips to help seal the moisture in. Another moisturizing lip product that I really like that is a drugstore lip mask is this Milani Rose Butter Lip Mask. So out of all of the options I've tried at the drugstore, this is my favorite drugstore lip product. It moisturizes really well and it also stays on the lips throughout the night. But like I said with the Primera one, generally it's really hard for me to find a lip product that stays on the lips throughout the night while also not having a really sticky texture. Texture, and unfortunately this one is a little bit sticky in texture. It's not overly sticky like a lip gloss or anything, but if you smack your lips together, you will definitely feel that stickiness. And that being said though, it does do a good job of moisturizing the lips. Another thing I also wanna mention that might be a little bit of a drawback for some people, it is pretty fragrance. There is a strong rose scent. Personally, I don't mind it. I do find that it does persist a little bit throughout the night. So if you are someone that is sensitive to scents, this might not be a good option for you. The standout ingredients in this product include shea butter, castor oil, vitamin E and hyaluronic acid. This product I wanna talk about is really good for helping to smooth and exfoliate the lips. And it is this Mamont Lip Sleeping Mask. And I have mine here in the pomegranate version. If you are looking for something that's just strictly moisturizing, this isn't really gonna to perform too well on that front. It does help a little bit. The ingredients list does include shea and muramura butter. You still get some of those emollient hydrating butters in there, but they're not as high up on the ingredients list as some of these other lip masks that I talked about. So you're not gonna see as dramatic of a hydrating effect as you will with the Primera or the Milani lip mask that I talked about. Where this stands out compared to those products is the formulation does include a small amount of glycolic acid. Now, like I said, it's not gonna be a super high concentration like a product formulated for the face. It's included at a much lower concentration, one that is much more appropriate for a leave-on lip product. But the glycolic acid is basically gonna help to break up and dissolve the upper layer of dead skin cells on the lips and it just really helps with smoothing and exfoliating the lips overnight. And then I do wanna also highlight two lip balms and I want to highlight these specifically because they do contain sunscreen in them. Now like I said earlier the skin on your lips is thinner than the skin on the rest of the face and in general it lacks the pigmentation that natural melanin that the rest of your skin does so it lacks that natural UV protection and by being
being thinner. It's also more susceptible to damage from UV rays. So it's really important that if you're gonna be spending time outside that you are protecting your lips from UV rays as well because those are one of the first places on your face to show signs of aging. And because they lack that natural UV protection, this is also one of the areas of your face that's most susceptible to developing skin cancers and stuff like that. So I just wanna mention two products here that provide a little bit of UV protection that also will help to moisturize the lips. So the first one I wanna talk about is this Jack Black Intense Therapy Lip Balm. I'm almost at the end of this one. As you can see, the packaging is looking pretty beat up. But if you need a visual representation of how much I adore this product and stand by it, I honestly keep at least two backups of it because I'm so afraid of running out of one, losing one. And it's actually really affordable. I think they sell for $8 a tube. It comes in a variety of different scents and flavors, but I like to just get mine in the Shea Butter and Vitamin E, which I just assume is the plain unscented version because I don't really care for any of the scents or flavors. I don't feel like it adds anything to my experience with the lip balm. It has a really solid ingredients list. There's a lot of hydrating ingredients as well as ingredients that provide antioxidant protection and there's not that many filler ingredients so it's a really effective product. So looking at the ingredients list there's ingredients like shea butter, green tea extract, lanolin, avocado oil, cocoa butter, and vitamin E and these all help to moisturize the lips and help provide antioxidant benefits as well. This product's also really rich in petrolatum. Like I said this isn't really going to necessarily moisturize the lips in and of itself what it's gonna do is smooth over the lips and create an occlusive barrier that locks the moisture in so this in addition with all of the other ingredients in the product really help to infuse the lips with moisture but then help prevent that moisture from escaping now like I said this does contain some sunscreen it's SPF 25 and I do just want to touch on that a little bit because I do have some reservations recommending this as your go-to lip product if you do need something with SPF in it I do think that this is okay if you're just doing casual day-to-day -day activities and you don't plan to spend extended periods of time out in the sun but if you are going to be outside for long stretches of time I do have another recommendation that I think is better for protecting your lips from the UV rays now with the Jack Black it contains two UV filters it contains avobenzene which helps to filter out UVA rays and then it also contains octanoxate which is better at absorbing UVB rays now the reason why I don't think this is a good sun protecting lip balm for days when you're going to be spending long stretches of time out in the sun is avobenzene is the only UVA filter approved by the FDA currently. And the problem with avobenzene is it's very unstable. It degrades very quickly upon exposure to UV rays. So when you have a product that includes avobenzene in the ingredients, you need to formulate it with something to stabilize the avobenzene so that it doesn't degrade as quickly. The Jack Black formula doesn't include any stabilizing ingredients that help to keep the avobenzene functional for long periods of time. So like I said, this will be good to throw on for casual day-to-day -day activities if you're not spending too much time out in the sun. And if you're reapplying if you are going to be outside for a long period of time I would recommend something a little bit more reliable that's a little bit more stabilized now personally I would recommend looking at some of the SPF lip products from super goop I've tried their ASE lip balm and I really enjoyed that it's pretty similar to the Jack Black in texture it moisturizes pretty well not as good as the Jack Black but it does moisturize pretty well it has SPF 30 and it does contain some of those ingredients that help to stabilize the avobenzene so that can block out the UVA rays for longer another one that I've been using is this super Supergoop Lip Shield SPF 30. If I had to choose between this and the lip balm, I would personally go for the lip balm. I don't like this as much, but on days when I know I'm gonna be outside for long periods of time and I need something to protect the lip, the function of the product is my main concern. You know, the feel, the texture, taste, all that takes a back seat. The ingredients list on this actually isn't too bad. We've got moisturizing ingredients in here like shea butter, coconut oil, jojoba oil, avocado oil, grapeseed oil. There's also aloe extract and vitamin E. So like I said, not the worst formulation. And it also contains a couple other UV filters that aren't included in the Jack Black lip balm that help filter out even more of the UVB rays and to help stabilize the avobenzene. So this isn't the most moisturizing on the lips. It'll get the job done. But like I said, I reach for this when I'm prioritizing sun protection over moisturizing the lips. And as well, because it is formulated more as like a sunscreen rather than a lip balm, it does have a little bit of a taste to it. It doesn't really have that sunscreeny smell, but definitely if you do ingest this, you will taste it a little bit. It's not the most unpleasant taste but you'll know it's there so that's it for my video that's all i wanted to talk about today i hope you all enjoyed this video hopefully you were able to take something from this learn something new if you did enjoy this video be sure to go ahead and give it a thumbs up let me know down in the comments below what are some of your guys favorite lip products what is your lip routine let me know if you've tried any of the products that i recommended or if you're interested in trying any of them also leave a comment down below if y'all have any ideas for any videos you want to see in the future like i said if you haven't already just be sure to go ahead and click the subscribe button and the bell button as well so that you get a notification every time I upload a new video. And with that being said, I should be back shortly with a new video. Bye.